you have got to hear what Bianca Belair just said about Charlotte Flair, because these two are two of WWE's biggest stars, not only in the women's division, but in the entire company. However, interesting stat for y'all, they've only shared the ring a few times, with most coming in multi-woman matches. They've only worked three singles matches together since 2020. Think about that. In their entire careers, they've only gone one-on-one three times, and I bet you can't even remember those matches. You know why? Because I can break them down for you. So their first encounter was in February of 2020 while in NXT, while their second outing was on a October 2021 episode of Raw, and their third encounter was later that month on Raw. And so when appearing on the casual conversation with the classic, Bianca Belair did discuss the importance of such a match between her and Flair because not only have they not shared the ring that that often against one another, they've never done it at a premium live event. They've never done it at a WrestleMania or in a big spotlight or a main event. But they're also two of the company's biggest stars. And so when you have such ingredients, rarity of matches, rarity of sharing the squared circle together, and the star power in which both stars bring, well, it's going to make for big business, success, right? And for the most part, they've been on kind of opposite brands. I mean, if you look at it right now, they're, they're passing, they're like two ships passing in the night, right? That's That's what their careers, in my opinion, has been defined as. So, this is what Belair had to say when discussing a potential match with Charlotte Flair. There hasn't been that one big match yet, and we're all waiting for it. It was a non-finish, meaning their last encounter. So we've never actually had a legit feud in the singles match. For me, that's at the top of my list. Of course, right now, it's EO Sky getting my title from EO Sky. Hands down. She's a champion right now. I'm going to go for it. But like a bigger picture, because for me, when I came in, in into WWE, Charlotte was one of the first people that I looked up to. She has Ric Flair as her dad. But she came into WWE with zero wrestling experience. It, she was a collegiate athlete. So I saw myself in her and remembered being in NXT. And like, if I ever where Charlotte is, I want to have a match with her. And I think the Bel Air versus Flair that's a big match. So I'm hoping one day it happens. I look forward to that day that it happens because we're like one person. I've been able to keep away from, for the most part, we had a triple threat. We've done some tag team matches together. I just feel like two different generations and it's like for us to collide at the mountaintop. And she's only, she's the only horsewoman or horsewoman I have not beat yet. That's a goal of mine. So she'll be the fourth that I have to go for. So to me, that's a dream match of mine, and I hope that it happens one day. And here is a quote that you can underline. I don't think there's a match right now that could be bigger than that match, and I 100% agree. That is a WrestleMania main event-worthy match. Bianca Belair versus Charlotte Flair. It doesn't even have to be for a title, although you know the strap will be on the line. Either way, sign me up for this match. I love this idea. I love this match. And speaking of Bel Air and speaking of this interview, she also was asked which match she felt put her on the map and made her a top star on the main roster, which is an interesting question because she's had a lot. I mean, she shared the ring with everyone, right? Uh, Except for Charlotte Flair for the most part. Whether that be Becky Their iconic 2021 just squash match at SummerSlam. They ran it back the following year and actually had a legit bout. So this is what Belair had to say. There's a bunch. That's a hard question. I mean, definitely WrestleMania main event. WrestleMania 100%. The history that we made, the representation, and the importance of that match was needed in WWE. And we did that. So 100% that would be like the match at the top of the list because that's something that will go down in history. That's something that was needed. That was unprecedented. And that was a match that spoke everything about who I am. But outside of that too, I feel like any match with Bailey that I've had because we made so much history. Our matches are so unique and different from Hell in a Cell 
the last woman standing match, the ladder match. It's like any of those matches. You could just tell anybody to go watch any of those matches, and that's what she would recommend. And I would agree. People sleep, and I think it was largely due to it being in the pandemic, but it's like people sleep on her matches with Bailey. Bailey and Belair tore the house down, especially that last woman standing match. I cannot recommend that match enough. Go out of your way and see that. The Hell in a Cell was very good. Uh, ladder match was great. But that last woman standing match was very, very good. And that was at a time where Bailey was firing on all cylinders, right? And Bianca's always had this thing where she's just this lovable baby face that you just can't help but root for and want to succeed. And she continues to just knock it out of the ballpark. Whatever the company does, whatever they ask her to do, she always crushes it, whether it's media, promos, matches, being a social influence, you name it, she crushes it. And that is why the company rewards her the way they do. And that's why they continue to push her. I mean, she is, I mean, there's not a, a perfect role model out there or near a uh, I don't even like to be like, well, you should have a role model because I think in the end, they'll let you down eventually if you meet them. But from an outside standpoint, and you know, everyone's got their demons and their faults and everything like that. But for the most part, man, Bianca Belair, she's something special. She really, really is. And you knew it from the get go, whether that be when she first started out at NXT and she was greener than grass, right? And she had that NXT women's title reign. Um, and I, I touched on this in a previous video about, and you can go check it out, watching Becky Lynch have a goal of becoming NXT women's champion and achieving that goal and having this the kind of success that she had in NXT inspires Bel Air to go back to NXT and have another run in NXT and potentially be a women's champion in NXT. And I'm all for it. I think that's a brilliant, brilliant idea. At a time where WB is continuing to send main roster talent down to NXT, giving younger talent the rub, giving younger talent the ability to learn from a seasoned veteran, especially like someone like Becky Lynch or Bel Air. In addition to bumping up the ratings for NXT, I mean, that's clearly paid off considering that NXT and WB just got paid by the CW Network starting in 2024, leaving the USA Network getting like something, uh, a 70% increase in television rights deals. I mean, that's incredible. And this comes from Nick Khan, who has decided, you know what, we're going to send these stars down there and we're going to have them cross paths with our younger talent. I think it's a brilliant move. And I think you can see in the television ratings and the social media engagement and any business metric across the board that it's paying off to the point where, you know, they're talking about taking the brand, going touring uh, with weekly television, not just premium live events. Obviously they wrap up uh, 2023 in December on, on December 9th with deadline out in, I believe Connecticut. Um, they got a lot of good talent down there, both uh, male and female. I mean, if you look at the guys like Dragunov and Carmelo Hayes, Trick Williams looks like he's going to be a breakout star. Obviously, you have Braun Breaker, who is clearly ready for the main roster. The ability to take talent, whether you are a top star who just needs to give someone else a shine or help out the brand by going down there like a, a, a Becky Lynch or a Bianca Belair, or you're someone on the main roster who just needs a revamp and really needs to kind of reignite what they're doing as a character and their work and their their position in the company. And it sees a great platform for that. And you can have dream matches and, and there's a lot of positives to that. And so I think the idea of a, a Bianca Belair going down to NXT or being one of the Nets main roster stars to go to NXT, I think it's a brilliant idea. And what they're doing on television right now, obviously, uh, Bianca came up short at Crown Jewel when trying to, to dethrone EO Sky, what she previously just talked about in the interview. Uh, thanks to the returning Kari Sane and costing Bianca that win, that match, that title. That's another uh, direction you could go into. I mean, 
Bel Air versus Sky or Bel Air versus uh, Cardi Sane or just damage control in general. That's a very fun direction, especially heading into Survivor Series and everything that's been going on there. But like things are good if you're a Bianca Bel Air fan. I'll say that. 